So if anybody asks you, how do you identify people who are children of God? You'll probably say, <laughs> people who believe in the Lord Jesus. And you'll be wrong. So in order to find out the correct answer, in order to find out how do we truly know those who are children of God, stick around. So when we are studying scripture, we build line upon line and precept upon precept. We build one scripture upon another scripture, upon another scripture, upon another scripture, until we get the complete picture of what the Bible says. If you pick just one verse of scripture and just run with only one verse of scripture, you're going to have an incomplete understanding of what the Bible says. So let me give you an example. Let's go to the book of Matthew. The Bible says that, ask and you shall receive. So what this verse is implying is that whatever you ask God for, God is going to do. Once you bring your prayer point, it says whosoever asks it, you receive it. So once we bring our prayer point and we ask God for something, we should get an answer regardless, right? We should always get an answer. So someone can take this verse now and just run with it and just think that God answers all our prayers. God answers every single prayer point. That just bring any prayer point and God will answer. And he'll be wrong. And the reason he'll be wrong is because he hasn't built line upon line and precept upon precept. He has picked only one verse of scripture and built his entire knowledge of God based on only that one verse. So let's read another verse. First Peter 3, verse 7. It says that, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, that means, that means your wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So this verse is saying that as a husband, you must treat your wife well. You must treat her with honor, right? And if you don't treat your wife with honor, then God will not answer your prayers. That's what he's saying. But if you pick only Matthew chapter 7, which we read before, and you just say whatever we ask God for, the Bible says we should just ask that God hears prayers. Meanwhile, you're not, you're treating your mouth, treating your wife, right? You have an incomplete understanding of what God says. Let me show you another verse. First John 3, 22. It says that whatsoever we ask of him, we receive. If we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So the Bible says that whatsoever we ask of God, we're going to receive them. If we do things that are pleasing to God, if we live lives that are pleasing to God. So the implication is that when you live in your sin, there are some of your prayers that God will not answer. So, so somebody can just pick, many people have picked verses like, they just pick any verse, oh, any verse that talks about God answering prayers, and they just believe that, just bring your prayer, and God will answer. And now they are surprised that they have like 20 prayer requests, and out of the 20, maybe only five have been answered. But the Bible, which is the verse we just read, when you don't do things that are pleasing to God, when you live in sin, sin today, sin tomorrow, sin repent, sin, to, you, your life is not pleasing to God. It says God will not answer your prayer. Let's read another verse. This is 1 John 5, 14. It says now, this is the confidence we have in him, 
that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So the Bible says that when we ask God things according to his will, that, that, that's when we can be sure that we'll get an answer to our prayers. So let me give you an example. Right, let's say I am four other brothers. We don't know each other. We're just random. We're just Christians. Right? We don't know each other. We're Christians. And we saw a job opportunity advertised online. Right. And the job opportunity is just one position. It's not more than one person can. It's just one position available, only one. Right. So four of us individually just browsing the net see this job opportunity. And four of us decide to apply our faith and say that God. I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast, I'm going to go for this interview. I'll put in my best and I'm trusting you that I will get this job. So four of us are Christians, good, zealous, God-loving Christians. Four of us have faith. So it's not like there's no there's no issue of faith. Right? And four of us apply our faith. Four of us do what is right. Right. We pray, we believe God, our faith is strong. Unfortunately, only one person will get that job. There's only one position. Four of us can't get the same position. There's only one position. So, and the person who will get that position is the one who it is that is God's will for him to get that position. The one who God's will, God's perfect will for him is that position. That's the one that will get the position. Three of us out of the four, three of us will come out with unanswered prayers. So we can now start begrudging God. That the Bible says, ask and shall receive. Whosoever asks it, receive it. The issue is that we picked only one verse and built our entire library of scriptural knowledge on top of one verse. So our understanding as regards to the subject of answered prayers is incomplete, right? Because we have not searched scriptures to find the other line that you build on top of the line, the first line you had, and the precept you build on top of the precept. So let's get into what we're discussing today, right? How do we know someone is a child of God? John chapter 1. From verse 11. It says, Now he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received them, he gave them the power to be called sons of God. So, the first step to actually be called the son of God is actually to receive Jesus. Right? To believe that Jesus is the Christ. He's the Savior. He died. He resurrected on the third day. To believe that he's the only God. He's the only way to the Father and to confess it with your mouth. So when anybody has believed in Jesus and confessed Jesus, has surrendered himself unto Jesus, he has started on the road to becoming a son of God. But many people stop here. When it comes to the understanding of who are who is a Christian, basically, who is the son of God or who is a Christian, many people stop at this verse and they just camp here that as long as I believe and confess that Jesus is Lord, then I am the son of God. But remember the example we just gave about prayers, right? That you can't build your entire understanding on one verse. If not, your understanding will be incomplete. So let us take a journey and examine some other scriptures that talk about how to identify children of God. So first off, let's start by examining salvation. Right. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself, lest any man should boast. The Bible says it's salvation, our salvation is a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. So when we come to God, God is not expecting works because our salvation is by faith. The Bible says it's a gift of God. It's not of yourself and it's also not of works. So God is not expecting works when we come to him. We come to him exactly the way we are. We can't come with works. We just come and when we come to God like that, he, accept, he accepts us and then he saves us. But when you now read verse 9, right? we just read verse 8. The Bible says that we are not saved through works. Verse 9 now says that we are saved unto works. The Bible says that God has ordained that we should have good works. It says you are his workmanship 
in Christ Jesus and we are ordained unto works, works that God had ordained that we should we should live in before. So before salvation, God is not expecting works. He's not expecting anybody to live a holy life. He's not expecting anybody to to be righteous. It's not it's not a, just come the way you are. But when you are saved, the Bible says that we are now his workmanship. Right? And we are ordained unto works. So we are supposed to now live a holy and live a righteous life. And it is this holy and this righteous life that now confirms our status, our status as sons of God. Because Jesus is by your fruits, by their fruits you shall know them. It is actually the fruits that confirms that you are a son of God. It is not that you just believe. Before salvation, right? God doesn't expect anything from you because we are all sinners and there's nothing you can do about it. But when you are saved, there's an expectation that you now begin to live in righteousness and begin to live in holiness. And it is this lifestyle of holiness and lifestyle of righteousness that proves that you are a son of God. And that's why Jesus says, by their fruit you shall know them. Jesus didn't say, by the people that believe, you shall know them. We don't know each other by who believes. Anybody can believe. Anybody can see he believes, whether, it, whether it's true or not. And anybody can even believe. But Jesus didn't say, we know them by who believes. So we don't know who is the Son of God by saying, I am a Son of God, or I am a Christian, or I go to church. Or I've confessed Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus didn't say, we know them by their confession. We know them by their fruit. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. Look at what it says. It says, Little children, let no man deceive you. It says, He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. In verse 10, he now says, In this are the children of God manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, and who does not love his neighbor, is not of God. So from verse 7, look at what the Bible says. It says, Little children, let no man deceive you. It says, Whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. It says, he soever doeth righteousness is righteous. You know, people always talk about, uh, I'm righteous by nature. Righteous, righteousness is in nature. But righteousness is not only in nature. If you read the New Testament, righteousness is both a nature and an action. It says, whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. It didn't say, whosoever believes that he is righteous is righteous. It didn't say, whosoever has received Christ is automatically just righteous because he has received Christ. Because if you even if you receive Christ and you live in sin, you are still not righteous. If you receive Christ, then you go around communicating, lying, cheating. When they are identifying righteous men, they won't identify you. You are a sinner. You are living in your sin. You are actually living in your sin. So you are not righteous. The Bible says, whosoever doeth, is an action. People who live holy. That's who is righteous. Whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. So, the reason why salvation, people get confused. The reason why before you come to Christ, salvation is without works is because before you are saved, you can't have works. It's not possible for you to have works when you are not saved. It's impossible for somebody who has not given his life to Christ to live a righteous and a holy life. That's like contending with the devil in your flesh. That's exactly what it is. Because when you are not saved, when you, don't, when you haven't given your life to Christ, you are in your flesh. There is no empowerment from God. God is not your master. He's not your. You, you can't even tap into the life of God. So anybody who cannot tap into the life of God cannot live a holy life. So when God wants to save us, he can't demand that we have works because it's not possible for us to have works. You can't, you can't live a life of righteousness while you have not received Jesus. It's impossible. Nobody can do it. So it would be unreasonable of God for him to demand works from us when we cannot have the works. But after salvation, the reason the Bible now says that we are in workmanship, right? And we are ordained unto works 
It's because now you have the Holy Spirit. You have an empowerment from God. The Holy Spirit comes with power. And he gives you the power to actually live holy, to actually live righteous. That's why after Ephesians 2, it says that it is not of works that we are saved. The very next verse now says that we are ordained unto works. Because when you are now saved, God can now demand that you live righteous. So when you are in the world, God can't tell you to stop fornicating. How can you stop? You can't stop now. God can't tell somebody who is in the world to stop sexual immorality. How is he going to do it? How can he contend with the sin, his sin nature, without salvation? It's not possible. So it would be unreasonable of God for him to for God to now say, before I can save you, come with your works. He can't come with his works. It's not possible for him to stop. But when you are now saved, God can now say flee sexual immorality. After you are saved, God says now tells you to flee sexual immorality. That command is for you. Because now God can hold you responsible if you are fornicating, because you can stop. You have the Holy Spirit. It's an empowerment. It's an empowerment from God. So the ones who have now actually stopped living in their sin. They have produced fruit. It's that fruit that we now use to identify them, that they are children of God. It says, little children, let no man deceive you. Whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. Even as he, that he is Jesus Christ, is righteous. Then in verse 10, he now says, in this are the children of God manifest, and the children of the devil. So what he's saying is, this is how we know the children of God. If you want to decide who is a child of God and who is a child of Satan, this is how you know it. It says, in this are the children of God manifest. It says, whosoever doeth not righteousness, neither he that loveth not his neighbor. So anybody who does not walk in law and who does not live a holy life is not a child of God. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, neither he that loveth not his neighbor. When you choose to not live righteous, to live a godless life. You're actually a child of the devil. Let me explain something to you. So spiritually, you know your master by who you will be. Romans 6.16, 6, right? The Bible says, Know ye not that whom so, to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants we are whom ye obey. Whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. So it says that whoever you obey becomes your master. If you obey sin, sin becomes your master. By extension, Satan becomes your master because Satan wields the power of sin. It says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So when you choose to obey sin, what you're doing is that you're pledging that you're actually saying that Satan is my master. That's why you cannot be called, that's why you cannot be called the child of God, because you are pledging allegiance to Satan. Let me give you an example. So let's say there are two you see me with two men. Let's say you see me on the street and there are two men beside me. One is Michael, the other one is Donald, right? Then I tell you that Michael is my boss. In other words, Michael has employed me and I work for him, right? But you now notice that every time Michael gives me an instruction, I don't listen to him. So even though I've told you, right, verbally with my mouth that Michael is my boss, when Michael says, send me this proposal, I don't send this. Michael says, come, let's go and see this client. I don't come. Michael says, we're having a meeting by nine, and I just ignore him. Meanwhile, I've told you that Michael is my boss. Then now imagine that Donald, the other guy now says, David, let me see you by 8, eight o'clock. And by 8 o'clock, I'm there. He says, make sure you send me this PowerPoint presentation by 12. And by 12, I send it to him. So the one that I claim that is my boss, Michael, when he gives me an instruction, I don't obey him. I just ignore him. But when the other one, who I didn't say anything about, gives me an instruction, I obey him. Any reasonable observer will come to the correct conclusion that my real boss is actually Donald. Even though with my mouth, I'm verbally saying that Michael is my boss. But everybody watching is noticing that when Michael says come, I don't come. He says go, I don't go. I just ignore him. But when Donald gives me an instruction, I will be Donald. So anybody who is, who is observing this interaction 
will logically and rightly conclude that my real boss is done up. So that's how it is spiritually. That's why the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. And it says, whosoever doeth righteousness. It is the fruit that proves that you are actually a son of God. It's not by saying with your mouth. So how can I be here now, saying I'm a son of God, I'm a son of God, Jesus is my master. Then Jesus says through his word, thou shalt not lie. Then Satan says lie. Then I'm lying up and down. And everybody in the spirit is watching that the one I claim is my master. He says don't lie. Then the one that I say, Satan, that I say I rebuke. When he gives me the instruction to lie, I go and lie. I'm, I'm, then I say that I'm the son of God, that Jesus, I'm deceiving myself. I'm completely and utterly deceiving myself. Or, I'm in my office, somebody came, comes to give me a bribe. Money that I didn't work for, that I, I know that I'm not supposed to take. Then Jesus says, no, you're a righteous man, don't take it. You're a holy nation, peculiar people, set apart for God, don't take it. Then Satan says, forget this thing, collect the money, you repent after. Then I will be Satan. Anybody watching it knows that Satan is the real master. That's why Jesus is by your fruit, you shall know them. That's why Jesus is by their fruit. It's not by words. We don't pledge allegiance to, to God by words alone. It says, whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. So there's a righteousness that is in nature, that is imparted to you when you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. So that nature now behooves on you. It now gives you the power, and there's now an expectation that that nature will produce an action. You know a tree by its fruits, right? How you identify trees is by fruits. It's not by what the tree says it is. It's not even by what the tree looks like. It is the fruit of the tree that proves to you what the tree is. And if you study the scriptures, there are many times the Bible, the, the, the scriptures refers to us as trees, right? The Bible refers to men, but especially believers, people who have received Jesus. The Bible refers to us as trees. For instance, if you read Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, seated in his, not seated in the seat of sinners, and doesn't go in the way of discomfort. But in verse 3, the Bible now says that he shall be as a tree. So this man, you can compare him to a tree. If you read Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1, this is, this is describing, basically describing the people that Jesus has come to save. After Jesus comes, people that accept him. This, is, this scripture is describing them. So he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He now says that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. So after you've accepted Jesus, right, you are, you are, you are, you are a tree. The Bible calls you a tree. That's why God can ask you to bear fruit. It's trees that bear fruit. It's only trees. Houses don't have fruit. Cars don't have fruit. The only thing that bears fruit are trees. So when you come to Jesus, the Bible says you are a tree. You are the planting of the Lord. So when you become a planting of the Lord, the proof that you are truly a planting of the Lord is the kind of fruit that comes out of your life. So 1 John 3, 7, it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. Whosoever doeth righteousness is righteous. It says, He that committed sin is of the devil. So, what this verse is, if you read it in other translations, right, it's very it's clear in other translations. What it says is, Whosoever goes on practicing sin is actually of Satan. Whosoever practices sin, if you read it in like Amplified, who lives in his sin, the Bible says it's of Satan, he's of the devil. It's the same thing Jesus says. We know each other by fruit. So when the fruit is a fruit of iniquity, you are of Satan. Even if you are seen, you are a child of God. Look at what Jesus said unto the Pharisees. He says, you are of your father the devil. He says, the loss of your father, that's what you are doing. Do you know why he says they are of their father the devil? 
He says they are doing the lust of their father. In other words, the desires. What is calling lust here is a desire, because lust is a strong desire. It's just that it's an evil desire. Lust is a desire, but it's an evil desire. So when he says they are doing the lusts of their father, they are doing the desires of Satan. They are doing the will of the devil. They are, they are, what the devil wants is what they, when the devil wants them to lie, they lie. He wants them to cheat, they cheat. He wants them to fornicate, they fornicate. He wants them to steal, they steal. He wants them to revenge, they revenge. He wants them to be wicked, to gossip, to slander. They do it. They are doing the will, and they are doing it deliberately. They are doing the will of their father, Satan. So Jesus looked at them and says, you have your father, the devil. Because the children of God and the children of Satan are manifest not by proclamation, by fruit. He says, whosoever doeth not righteousness, neither he that loveth not his neighbor. So if the children of God are manifest by fruit. It's not by only coming, to, coming up and saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. That's godly. That's nonsense. That's not what the Bible teaches. You are manifest by your fruit. So Jesus identified them as children of Satan because they obey Satan. They do the work of Satan. They are living for Satan. They like the works of Satan. They love sin. Even though they are religious, coming to church, you know the, the scribes? They are always in church now. Oh, you don't know. Many times Jesus is preaching, they come. Just like you, so you come to church, but you live in your sin. That's how they were doing it too now. They are, they are hypocrites. Outside, they, they see that they are children of God. They are children of Abraham. They are part of the covenant. They are part of the kingdom of God. But it's, they live like sinners. So Jesus said, oh, this, this one you are proclaiming. Don't you know what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite is somebody that pro proclaims what he is not. That's who, when you say scribes and Pharisees are hypocrites, be careful you are not a hypocrite. Be very careful. A hypocrite is somebody that, out with his mouth, he proclaims something, but his lifestyle is different. His lifestyle is different from what he says with his mouth. So with his mouth, he says, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. But he's sleeping with his girlfriend. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. But he's a funny kid. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He does the works of Satan. He's a hypocrite. He's deceiving himself. He's lying. He's lying to himself. But he can't lie to Jesus because Jesus knows his own children by fruit. He knows his own children by fruit. So if you say that you are a son of God and you are living in your sin, you are part of the scribes and Pharisees. You are part of them. You are part of them. You are hypocrites. You come to church like they go, like they go to the synagogue. You pray. Just the same way the scribes and Pharisees also pray. They are, they are in every crusade. They are in every prayer meeting. They are in every sermon on the mount. Outwardly, they look religious. So you two are saying the Lord bless you. You go for NSPPD. You pay, post scriptures on your on your WhatsApp status. Post scriptures on your Instagram. But you live in sin. You are this, you are this Pharisee. What's the difference? There's no difference. You are, you are your father the devil. You are your father the devil. Because we know each other by fruit. Let's read this first John 3 verse 10. In this are the children of God manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, neither he that loveth not sleep. That's how we know the children of God. So let me explain something to you. When you live in your sin, Satan will be sending you on errand without you knowing it. When you live in sin, Satan will send you on an errand. You will literally be working for the devil, and you will not know that you are working for the devil. Let me say that there's one lady now. Right. She's, she's 26, she's 26, 27. And she has kept her virginity since she was young. And Satan is very angry that she has kept her virginity. He's very, very angry. And what he wants that he wants to defile this sister. He doesn't want her to marry a virgin. So when I now go there and say that, let's say I go and meet the sister, I say I'm under grace. Then I say, Jesus, I say, Jesus, I say, Jesus. And they to come to my house for weekend, play night, some kind of music that will set the mood, light candles, and lead her into sin. I actually did the work of Satan. It's Satan that's looking for her to divergen, divergen her sins. It's Satan that's looking for her to divergen her. God wants her to be virgin. So if I now go there, deceive myself that I'm under grace, then lead this woman into fornication. I'm working for Satan. I'm of my father. I can, you can't deceive yourself. I can choose to deceive myself and say I'm the righteousness of God, but I, I just did the work of Satan. I'm working for the devil. Working for the devil. Let's say that as I was planning to come and make this video now, I've prayed. Hmm? I've prayed, I've read my Bible, I'm flowing in the spirit, flowing in the anointing. And I'm just, let me just come and do this video so people can be blessed. Then one brother just comes. In our lives, too. 
So when he lied to me, now, and I found out that this thing he just told me is not true. So when I found out that what he's doing is what he told me is not true, and I got angry. That why should you lie? Why should you do this to me? I thought you were my brother. Why are you? Why? Why? Are you lying? So when I got angry, the anointing vanished. So all that prayer, all that preparation, flowing in the anointing. That guy just came and lied to me. When he lied to me, I got angry. The anointing went. We don't have made the video because I was upset. Don't you know that, that brother just did the work of Satan? He just did the work of the devil. He can just he can leave now from where he finished lying to me, go to church and be dancing, be saying he's under grace. He just actually worked for Satan because it's Satan that I was planning. I don't want David Abraham to come and make this video. I don't want people to know about God. So let me look for a way to to rob him of this anointing. Let me look for a way to discourage him. So when he tried to use demons, he could not use demons. He now saw that brother. The brother now came. <laughs> he now came and Satan instructed him to lie. Then he came and lied to me. As he lied to me, I got angry. I did not make the video. Whose work did that guy do? He's working for Satan. He's working for Satan. So anybody who lives in sin is of his father, Satan. He's of his father, the devil. So there's a difference between living in sin and falling into sin. God doesn't mind when you fall into sin. Because he knows we are, we are human beings. We will not be perfect instantly. There is a journey to perfection to take time. So when we are falling into sin, you are not, you are not, a, you are not deliberately serving Satan. You are not deliberately yielding yourself to Satan. But those who are deliberately sinning, those are the people I'm talking to. Those are the ones that their father is dead. Remember that I said that we are trees, right? When you plant a tree, the fruit does not come out immediately. It takes time. If you plant mangoes or bananas today, the bananas don't grow immediately. So it, it takes some time. From Some crops take six months, some up to a year, some two years say, before it starts eating the fruit. So it's possible as a Christian, you're truly a Christian, you're truly saved, you came to God, but there are some things you're still struggling with. In other words, there's no fruit, but it doesn't mean you are not saved. It doesn't mean you are not a child of God. There are some things you are struggling with, either as an addiction, either your flesh is weak, or something. So people, if if anybody looks at you, they can even conclude you are a non-believer because of the way you are living your life. But if that thing is not deliberate, it's a struggle, it's an addiction, you are still a son of God. You are just in the process where your fruit is still coming out. And as you walk with the Holy Spirit, eventually, the fruit will come out. The fruit must come out. It must come out as long as you are a tree and you are planted in Christ and you live the way God wants you to live. Eventually, you will overcome the sin and your fruit will come out. But when you now see the ones who are deliberately sinning, they are not Christians. They are, they are, they are Father Satan. Anybody who sin today, deliberately sin tomorrow, sin next month, sin tomorrow. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says we know you by fruit. The Bible says we know each other by fruit. So some people can be confused. I say, oh, anybody that does it, when anybody just comes to you, I say, I, I, I believe in Jesus Christ, I attend, he calls him of one church, then you just conclude that he's a Christian. You'll be shocked in this life. You conclude in a Christian brother. I've stopped doing that long ago. Now, long ago, I stopped that. Now, if anybody comes to me and tells me he's a Christian, I say, it doesn't mean nothing. Anybody who comes to me and tells me with his mouth, I'm a Christian, it means absolutely nothing to me. Absolutely nothing. Until I see your foot, I really don't care. Tell me you're a Christian. So what? Anybody, everybody can see he's a Christian nowadays. Anybody can come to church. Anybody can sing that out. Anybody can see he believes. Anybody. So I don't care. I will study the person until I see their fruit. It is when I see the fruit that I can conclude this one is truly a brother in Christ. So before, we're not like this. Some of you also, before, were not like this or are still not like this. So people are shocked. You brought people close that you thought, oh, this one is my Christian brother, this one is my Christian sister, just because you saw them in church. And they surprised you with the level of backstabbing that they backstabbed you. They shocked you. Because you, you didn't, you did, maybe you didn't take it serious that we know each other by faith. In this are the children of God manifest and the children of the devil. If you are truly a son of God, why are you doing the will of Satan? If you are truly the, the son of God, why are you obeying another father? 
Why are you doing what the devil wants you to do? If God is truly your father. So the good news for anybody who is deliberately listening and is a child of Sita is that you can still repent. There's still time to repent. You are not condemned. It's not a, you're not, it's not like it's not a, it's not a closed case. You are not condemned. You can always repent. You can always stop deliberately listening and stop being a child of the devil and truly become a child of God. Don't let the devil tell you that you can never stop the sin or that. You know, that's how, it, that's how it is. There's nothing like that's how it is. You have the Holy Spirit. Everything works by faith. If you don't believe you can overcome it, you will never overcome it. Faith is not just for receiving a car, receiving a house, receiving a good job. Even your ability to live a holy life is by faith. Even to live righteous is by faith. So what the devil does is when somebody is struggling with a particular sin, he will come and start bombarding the person with lies. And say, well, don't worry now. You are a human being, you have flesh, but you know, before I would, uh, uh, you can never, don't worry, just be sinning, grace will cover you. All those are lies. But Jesus can never come and tell you, just be sinning, you are under grace. Because the Bible says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says, God forbid. So any voice that comes to tell you that you know you are under grace, just manage it, just, that voice is from Satan. That, I want to stress it that that voice is from Satan. Anything that tells you that you know you're under grace, you can't overcome, we're all human beings, let's just be living in it. That voice is from Satan. Because what the Bible actually says is, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? It says, God forbid. Any voice, even if the voice came from a pastor, even if it came from a man of God that stood on a stage somewhere and told you that, oh, you know, thank God for grace. We are all human beings just managing the sin. That voice is from Satan. Is it is from the devil? Because the scripture says, "Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound?" It says God forbid. He says, "How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there?" So what the scripture teaches is that you are dead to sin when you when you Christ when you give yourself to Jesus you died to sin. So sin in your life is dead. You mean it doesn't have authority over you. So you have the ability to actually live above sin. The problem is, do you believe it? That's the question. Do you believe that you can actually live above sin? If you don't, like I said, this kingdom, everything is by faith. If you don't believe you can stop from the you will never stop. Any sin that you don't believe you can stop, that you just accept and say, that, oh, this is how it is, we are human beings. Once you accept it, it becomes your reality. Because it's by faith that we're going to overcome. So we have many children of the devil sitting in church calling themselves Christians. And the problem with this group of people is that on Judgment Day, 